and welcome to the Waffle Flower Channel. It's Shannon here, and today I'm going to use the smushing technique to make a fall-themed thank you card. I had out there the trick-or-treat stamp set. I pulled off those pumpkins, and I am going to stamp them on a panel of watercolor paper. I am using embossing ink because I will gold emboss these pumpkins. Stamped them twice there so a nice clear image, and now I'm going to pour over my embossing powder. Shake it off, and then I'll take it over to my heat tool so to set that embossing powder. Got it all set here, and now I'm putting on a mask that I created by fussy cutting the image that I stamped on copy paper and positioning my pumpkins, that set of pumpkins again, slightly overlapping that first set, and that's going to make those pumpkins look like they are behind that first set of pumpkins. So we have a nice long row. I also stamped those embossing ink and clear, or I'm sorry, gold embossed those as well. Now I'm ready for the smooshing technique. I pulled out a standard straw there, smooshed it onto that piece of acetate and spritzed it with water. Now I'm smooshing it on my watercolor panel and moving it around to distribute that ink. Clean off my acetate and spritzing, or putting on a new color which is spiced marmalade, which is an orange. Spritzed it with water and now I'm applying it on my watercolor panel. I'm using the corner there to kind of move that ink around, distribute it around. I'll also smoosh on the acetate a little bit more to get some of those droplets that are on the acetate to get to apply them onto the, my panel. Okay, now I'm ready for my third color which is fired brick. Pushed it on my piece of acetate, spritzed it with water, and now I'm going to smoosh it onto my panel. Moving it around, moving the acetate around so I can kind of distribute that that red, that fired brick around. Getting little dots. I, I like this smooshing technique as opposed to, although I like painting with the watercolor brush too, but this is, uh, you get a nice, a different kind of look, like a uh, splattered look almost. Okay, I did dry my panel there, and now I'm moving on to my last water, or my last distressed ink, which is Evergreen Bow. I smooshed it on my acetate, spritzed it with water, and now I'm applying it over that watercolor panel. Using that corner of the acetate too to kind of move that ink around it. It's kind of like a finer tip. You have a little bit more control over where that ink goes. When this evergreen bow color mixes with the yellow and the orange, it kind of creates like a sage green, which I think works nicely into a fall kind of color palette. And I'm just moving that around, distributing it again so I have even distribu distribution of that color. Okay, I'm going to let it dry, which I did there with my heat gun actually. And now I'm going to do a little bit more smushing. I got the spiced marmalade again, which is that orange. Smushed it onto my piece of acetate, spritzed it with water, and now I'm going to apply it on my watercolor panel. This time I'm doing it a little bit differently because I'm going to focus on those pumpkins mainly. I want those pumpkins to be nice and bold and stand out from that smooshed background. So with this little bit more ink that I'm applying here, they're just going to be a little bit darker and that's going to help them stand out. And again, I'm moving the acetate around and using that corner of the acetate to kind of just move that ink where I want it to go. So I have a little bit more control. Even though this is kind of a loosey-goosey kind of technique, you can have a fair amount of control with that using that corner of the acetate. Now I'm going to do a little bit more fired brick, which is that red. Spritz it with my water there. And now I'm going to apply it again on those pumpkins. Focusing on those pumpkins there so I can get those nice and bold. I want those to pop from that background. And I'm also just moving them around. Just I might move put a little bit on the background too because I don't want them to I still want them to be cohesive at the background but stand up. So I might put a little bit of red droplets here and there just so it's consistent. Alright, moving using that corner, you can really see me using the corner here to get that move that ink around where I want it to be. And I'm gonna let that dry now. I'm done with the smushing. Now I'm ready for my sentiment. Oh no I'm not. Sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna add a shadow. That's what I'm gonna do now. I took the uh, memento ink which is uh, it's called rich cocoa and I smushed it onto uh, an acrylic block, spritzed it with water and now I'm taking my paintbrush here and uh, at the bottom of the pumpkins, the base of the pumpkins, I am applying that watered down ink. This is going to create a shadow. 
This is going to help those pumpkins stand out again from that background and also it is going to uh, make them pop and, and ground them. Sorry, it's going to ground them. I'm making the, the deeper creases where it should be darker. I'm applying more of that ink so they're a little bit darker. And then I'll take a, my brush and kind of thin out the as it fake as it gets away from the pumpkin base, so it it fades, and so that shadow it looks more like a shadow. All right, now I'm going to do my sentiment. Now it's sentiment time. I have my I have a the balloon messages stamp set there. I pulled off a sentiment, a thank you sentiment, and I'm positioning it on a scrap of craft paper. I'm going to stamp it with that memento rich cocoa color. And I'm using my Misty here because I am going to stamp it twice so I have a nice crisp um, sentiment. Stamped it twice there. Now I'm going to let it dry because what I'm going to do now, as you see there, I'm going to emboss. I've got it nice and dry so that my only the embossing powder will stick now where I'm going to stamp now. I actually have that sentiment slightly off from where I stamped it before. So I did move that sentiment. And that way, so a little bit of that brown is poking through and it's going to look like a shadow and that's going to help that gold sentiment really pop from on that craft paper because they are kind of like in the same color family and they can kind of blend together. So I stamped in embossing powder and I'm sorry embossing ink and now I poured on my gold embossing powder and I set it with my heat gun there. Okay now I'm going to create an accent strip. I've got my little gifts stamp set here and I pulled off that striped bag front and I am going to stamp it repeatedly, or I am, should I say, stamping it repeatedly on this strip of craft paper in that rich cocoa. And this accent strip is going to be on the left side of my card when I put it all together. I dried it really good, now I put some of that anti-static powder on top and I'm going to emboss this as well. I'm also going to offset this and with the, I'm going to stamp this uh, embossing ink image slightly off from the cocoa image. That way you can still see a little bit of that cocoa behind. This is almost like, I'm almost like creating a piece of pat, uh, pattern paper here, but um, the nice thing about creating your own pattern paper is that you know it will match your inks because you use your inks to make it. I do this a lot. I really like having a little accent sometimes especially an accent strip on my cards. All right, so I stamped all, I stamped it with my embossing ink and now I'm going to pour on my gold embossing powder here and then I'm going to shake it off and then I'll hit it with my heat tool. And then comes the fun part. We get to put it all together. All right, so there are all my three pieces, my accent strip, my sentiment, and my watercolor panel. First, I'm going to he adhere that accent strip. I'm going to stick it down on the left side of my of a craft card base, just using some a glue stick there. Stick it down, and then I will adhere my watercolor panel. Now, my watercolor panel was cut a little shorter than my card, and that's so that um, you can see that accent strip on the side. You do see pumpkins on the back of this watercolor panel because I stamped them and embossed them and I didn't like the way they look, so I just flipped the panel over and used the other side. Can't waste that watercolor paper. It is expensive. Okay, so I'm pressing it really good here. I want to get all those edges stuck down. I don't want to even pop up. The watercolor paper is thick, so really going to work it. All right, now i got my sentiment. I'm going to use some uh, foam tape snip a couple pieces off here and then I will adhere it to the upper left side of my card. That foam taste is going to get some dimension just, just make it a little bit more interesting. And once I stick that down here this card is finished. If you want any more product info please visit wafflefire.com to find out more about the stamp sets I used and if you'd like some more creative ideas follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Have a wonderful day.